And and Ed, once again, what kinds of, of pieces are they describing to you? Just we've just talked about what they what was in that parking lot, but what else are they describing? Well, what they do describe is that a lot of people, and I think it's, they're, it's based on what a lot of people have heard us reporting throughout the day. For example, uh, the, the talk of the tiles and and and, and the foam fragments that uh, that Miles O'Brien had been talking about th throughout the day as well. Um, so, we, you know, some of the fragments that I've seen kind of kind of resembled that. In some places, it's been harder to see than than in than in others. Uh, but uh, a, a lot of the stuff that you do come across as well, we haven't seen anything bigger than about five or six feet in, in, in diameter. And a lot of the stuff is is uh, you could tell has, has was burned pretty well. Uh, so uh, it, it's hard to tell exactly what the different fragments might be, but as, as soon as uh, the NASA officials are able to get to some of these locations, I think they'll be able to instantly recognize perhaps what some of the pieces might be. Well, one would assume they're going to have to use some local authorities uh, to help them do that, police and, uh, and other uh, perhaps fire and other officials. All right, Ed Lavendera with us from Nacogdoches in uh, East Texas, a uh, place where a good amount of debris and we assume human remains have come down from the shuttle Columbia. Let's go back to Atlanta now and Anderson Cooper. Anderson. Judy, thanks very much. Uh, as we've been talking about the recovery and, and, and the, uh, the recovery effort so far, I want to go back a little bit and, and go over the actual event itself. It occurred around 9 a.m. Eastern time this morning as the space shuttle Columbia was around uh, 200,000 feet or so at an altitude of about 200,000 feet. We know they were traveling about 12,500 miles an hour, undertaking a series of banking turns which helped slow the space shuttle down as it approaches uh, the, the landing pad in Florida. Uh, we're going to play you now the, the actual voice communication, the last known voice communication between the Columbia crew and the Johnson Space Center in uh, Houston. Columbia Houston, we see your tire pressure messages and we did not copy your last. Roger. Uh, that was obviously the silence that occurred after that last uh, message from, from uh, Commander Rick Husband, who uh, was at the controls. Um, just about 60 minutes before the space shuttle was supposed to land at Cape Canaveral in Florida. Um, we, there was a press conference earlier today. Uh, Milt uh, Heflin, the chief flight director, and Ron Dinamore, the shuttle program manager, held a press conference at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Uh, both said, obviously, an investigation uh, will be uh, underway shortly. Uh, they have already begun to uh, impound the hardware, they said, preserve the evidence, impounding the data. Uh, for investigators to search over. Obviously, that will be combed over very carefully in the coming days and weeks and months. There's no telling how long this investigation might occur, no telling uh, if and when the, uh, the next space shuttle uh, will launch. We're going to check in right now with uh, Carol Lynn for an update on, on what's been going on around the country. Carol? Anderson, we want to recap now the shocking events of today, the tragic loss of Space Shuttle Columbia and its crew. Columbia was on its way back from its 28th mission to land at Florida's Kennedy Space Center. But over central Texas, a trail of destruction. The shuttle began breaking into fiery pieces at more than 200,000 feet. The nation is mourning the loss of the seven Columbia crew members. They were coming home from a 16-day scientific mission. The mission was also historic. Crew member Ilan Ramon was the first ever Israeli astronaut. President Bush fondly lauded the astronauts for their bravery earlier from the White House. These men and women assumed great risk in the service to all humanity. In an age when space flight has come to seem almost routine, it is easy to overlook the dangers of travel by rocket and the difficulties of navigating the fierce outer atmosphere of the Earth. These astronauts knew the dangers, and they faced them willingly, knowing they had a high and noble purpose in life. Because of their courage and daring and idealism, we will miss them all the more. Meanwhile, the probe into Columbia's deadly descent is already underway. NASA investigators are gathering data, and across Texas into Louisiana, authorities are gathering pieces of fallen debris. Please stay with CNN this evening for special report 
at 8 Eastern, Larry King Live at 9 Eastern, and other live coverage of the Columbia disaster. We're going to go throughout the night with live coverage. In the meantime, Columbia headed for home, as all shuttles do, flying in fast and hard. In the days and weeks that followed, NASA will try to understand what caused the shuttle to break up just minutes short of her final destination. CNN's Frederica Whitfield traces Columbia's timeline. Early Saturday, before sunrise in Florida, good weather was expected at the shuttle's landing site at the Kennedy Space Center. The mission's only glitch so far had been a pair of malfunctioning dehumidifiers, which raised temperatures inside the shuttle's laboratory payload module slightly higher than desired. As the sun rose in Cape Canaveral, Florida, the early morning fog burned off, and Mission Control gave the seven astronauts the go-ahead to come home on time. Mission Control radioed the instructions, you are go for the deorbit burn. Shortly afterwards, Columbia begins its descent, these were the last words heard from Columbia. And Columbia, Houston, we see your tire pressure messages, and we did not copy your last. Roger. At about 9 a.m. Eastern Time, NASA officials lost contact with Columbia as it soared over north-central Texas. The craft was at an altitude of about 200,000 feet, traveling at 12,500 miles per hour, and was about 16 minutes away from the estimated landing time. The loss of contact was the first sign of any trouble. Communications uh, with Columbia were lost at about 8 a.m. Central Time, about uh, 10, 10 minutes ago. Fearing the worst, NASA ordered flight controllers to pull out emergency procedures and ordered them to retain all their records. There was no further communication and no further tracking data. Debris was found across a large area of southeast Texas. NASA issued a warning that any debris in the area should not be handled because it's hazardous. Frederica Whitfield, CNN. And Anderson, they're still finding debris across a couple of states. And it, it is a big job ahead. They're trying to secure those areas to make sure that people do not touch the debris, which of course can be toxic. That it can be.